Hey guys, welcome back to youtube.com, the world's most website. So I'd like to think it's pretty common knowledge by now that I am a grown up. Uh, but what you may not know about me is that I used to be a kid a long time ago, but I used to be a kid and I have very fond memories of the shows I used to watch as a kid. Things like Underwater Talking Sponge, uh, The Baby Show, Boy Got Fish, pretty much all the classics. In a perfect world, I think these classic shows would reach their logical conclusion and then just end. No reboots, no extra seasons. The problem is we don't live in that world. We live in a world where nostalgia is a commodity and everything even remotely good is rebooted 1,000 times. The most common and annoying example of this is the live action reboot of an animated thing, which in my experience has a success rate of about 0%? Well, no. Maybe like 1%. The Scooby-Doo movies were pretty good. But usually these feel doomed to fail from the start, mostly because a lot of the shows and movies that get rebooted as live action versions of a cartoon are things that really could only exist within a cartoon. Like I think the perfect example of this is Avatar The Last Airbender, which is an amazing show. I love that show so much. It's like the 11th highest rated show of all time on IMDb. Pretty much universally beloved. It's beautifully animated. And then they made it into a movie and it sucked ass. It's time for you to stop doing this. Nothing looks right. The fight scenes are awkward. The dialogue scenes are even more awkward. That child is being arrested. For what? He was bending tiny stones at us from behind a tree. It really hurt. <laughs> And Avatar obviously isn't the only example of this. There was the Death Note movie that was a train wreck. Disney does this a lot. They did it with Beauty and the Beast, which was kind of weird. Alice in Wonderland was kind of weird. Then of course they've got The Lion King coming up and everybody's favorite, Aladdin with Will Smith. YouTuber Will Smith, way to go, buddy. Yeah. This is your big break, making it into Hollywood. So that brings us to what I want to talk about today. Uh, the Kim Possible Disney Channel movie remake. It's mission time. Y'all remember Kim Possible? There's a girl and a, her friend, and there was a rat. I liked the show a lot as a kid. It wasn't one of my favorites, um, I think, because I probably thought it was for girls, because, you know, she's a girl. But it was a pretty good show, and I'm sure if I were to watch it again now, I would recognize it as being objectively better than most of the kids' shows that are made. Today. But as we discuss, what happens with anything that is even remotely good and 10 or more years old, it gets rebooted. So a few years ago, I accidentally received a distress call. I was done with my homework, so I answered it. Now, well, I save the world. Who am I? I'm Kim Possible. Okay. I got this. There's something about her that makes her able to defeat villain after villain after villain. Yeah. I will steal that spark <gasps> that makes Kim possible. Get her! So it looks pretty good. I like this comment. We want Kim possible, not Kim probably. Mind if we crash the party? But that's just the trailer. You know, sometimes trailers are edited poorly or they just don't really showcase what the movie is really about or how it actually is. So we don't want to judge too harshly. Uh, but there's more. They released a sneak peek. And this is an actual scene from the movie. Kim, the bus is on your street now! She doesn't even run good. <laughs> She's grunting, but her mouth isn't moving. Literally the most basic activity someone could do in an action movie is run. And they managed to mess that up. Then she sees the buses there and she kind of speeds up, but doesn't actually speed up. And then you got these dumbass moms. One of which is looking towards the baby. But I guess she doesn't notice it rolling down the hill in an almost comical fashion. So she does a barrel roll for no reason and then shoots a grappler at the stroller? Oh my god! Thank you, Kim! Thanks, Kim! Here's your gadget back! The doors are closing! And then this kid has a countdown to when the doors are closing? How would he know that? Seven! How does he know when the bus driver is planning on closing the doors? Five! Four! Three! 
Wow. Made it. She made it. She made the bus. Oh yeah. Wait, so was he gonna close the doors if she was right outside but didn't quite make it? Like, oh, sorry, student, my hands are tied. The countdown ended. I gotta go. Oh yeah. What I don't understand the most about this is it looks like a dumb, stupid thing made for kids, which is fine. It's fine if you're gonna make a Disney Channel movie for kids, they typically all are. But then why do Kim Possible, a show that started in 2002, if you're making this for eight-year-olds, an eight-year-old doesn't know who the fuck Kim Possible is. But even more than that, and probably even worse, is it just looks bad. Oh my god! It doesn't look like something Disney made. It looks like something a fan made and then put on YouTube. Actually, no, I think a fan could have made a better version of this. And in fact, I believe in that so strongly that that's exactly what I did. Beep, 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 doop. Hurry up, Kim, your mom's here. Is this your baby? Thanks, you saved my baby's life! No problem. Better step on it, Kim. She's gonna leave in five, four, three, two, one. Oh, yeah! Well, I think it's safe to say my list of regrets is now a little bit longer. I'm probably gonna put that whole sketch by itself on Twitter, so if you want, you could go retweet it or just watch it again, or maybe, I don't know, send it to Disney and see if we can get them to remake the entire Kim Possible movie with me as Kim and Ron and everybody. It's always been my dream to star in my own Disney Channel original movie. I guess I just never thought it would be as a teenage girl. Hey, speaking of dreams, why don't we check out some of my New Year's resolutions? Well, that didn't take very long. Oh wait, there's one more. Well, looks like I have to. Guy, if you feel so inclined, I do have some new merch available, including this very cool t-shirt that is also very colorful and dare I say, very good. I've also got a couple of new hoodies on there, a huge collection of sticker, and that sign. Because no matter how hard I try, I don't think I'll ever escape the shadow of my own legacy as the stop sign guy. So if any of those things sound like they might make a good addition to your life or the life of someone else that you know, uh, click the link in the description. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, if you're not already, don't forget to hit that subscribe button or you might miss out on my next video where I finally explain the difference between a butt and an ass. Goodbye. Some of my other favorite shows as a kid, gosh, uh, Boy Brain, Manual Labor Guy, Dog Detective, Dog and Cat, Bus, 